A few weeks ago, I shared with you products that I have recently hauled. And so today I wanted to get ready with these recently hauled products and show you the look that I came up with. I have used most of these products already, so only a couple of these products will be a first impression today. Make sure that you stay tuned until the end so that way I can share with you my final thoughts about some of these products. I always wear a headband when I do my makeup because I cannot stand the thought of hair in my face. So we're gonna go ahead and start out with, this is not a new product, but this is something that I recently picked up. It is the NYX Glitter Primer because the lid shade that I am going to use from the palette today is a little bit glittery and I've never tried this before. So I thought, well, I'm gonna try it out. And if you're asking me why I am applying this first, I learned a technique, I believe it was from Wayne Goss, uh, to always do your lid primer and your under eye corrector before you put on your foundation. Now I am the type of person that likes to do my foundation before I do my eye makeup. I don't know if it's just because I like like that like blank face, but um, that's just the way that I apply my makeup. You feel free to apply yours the best way that works for you. All right, so the foundation product that I picked up recently was the NARS Soft Matte, and I picked it up in the shade Patagonia. I also picked up another foundation, but it is more of my summer shade, and I need to like reapply another coat of self tanner uh, before I use that again. Now NARS foundations are manufactured or they're designed to be able to use with the fingers. So I went ahead and applied some here. You guys are going to see this is a full coverage. Look at this, you guys. I look like I'm painting on the war paint. That's what my husband calls it. He's like, ah, oh, you're putting on the war paint. I said, yep. And if this scares you, don't because this blends out really easily. I mean, look at this. I just, I mean, I look like I'm pulling off a mask off of my face, but this is like full coverage very quickly. Now I am the type of person that I do like to go in with a dampened beauty blender and I will do this to pick up any excess and then also to just blend it out. Now I have been wearing this foundation quite a bit recently and I think the name scares off a lot of people because they hear soft matte. So if you are somebody with really, really dry skin, I don't think that you will like this product. I am normal to oily. This foundation works beautifully on me. Um, I know that Mandy Davis also likes it a lot. She's um, spoken highly about it. But it is definitely, if you are somebody who likes light, minimal coverage, this is not your foundation. But it is very lightweight on my skin. I don't feel like my face is like cracking or like I'm wearing a mask. But I really, really like this. Um, it blends out pretty easily. And like I said, one of the great things about it is that it is designed to be applied with your fingertips. So. I didn't even really need a brush for that. I honestly haven't tried it with a brush because NARS just recommends applying it with your fingertips and I figure if it's not broken, why try to fix it? The next product that I picked up recently is the M Cosmetics. This is their So Soft Bronzing Stick and this is in the shade Terra. Now, Emily Noel raves about this. It is like a cool brown. It's supposed to be a bronzer, but I use it as contour. And you guys can see this color. I hope it's put, translating on camera the way that it is in real life here. It's very cool toned, but look at how easily this blends out. I mean, it just, <laughs> it's super easy. I also picked up the Kosas Cloud Set Powder. I believe this is in the shade medium, but I will make sure in the description box down below. Um, a lot of people rave about this. Now, if you are new here, one of the things that I have talked about is that any kind of powder products, I have to make sure they are talc free because my skin in general does not like talc. However, I did just pick up another powder that I'll show in another video. Um, that is a very well loved product that does contain talc in it. And I wore it the other day and it wasn't too much of a problem. Um, but this is a very nice, powder. It sets my makeup pretty well. Um, I haven't had any issues with my makeup budging on it. 
I haven't noticed any oxid oxidization. Is that a word? Um, I haven't noticed it oxidizing. So I've liked it quite a bit. Um, I wouldn't say that it keeps me shine free all day, but honestly, I haven't found a powder to ever do that. Um, but it's a very nice powder. It doesn't make me look cakey or anything like that. So I'm happy that I picked this one up. The eyeshadow palette that I picked up, which was kind of a surprise thing, is the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz palette. Now, this is really pretty, you guys, especially for this time of year. Um, I'm going to try not to blind you guys with all of these shades, but come on with that. I mean, it is beautiful. So I think what I'm going to do today is I want to go with a pinky look because my blush is pretty pink. So I am going to go ahead and take my BK Beauty 201 brush and I'm going to go ahead and dip into the shade Radiate. Tap off my brush and I'm going to go ahead and put that in my transition. That's a really pretty color. And you know, the funny thing with eyeshadows is that sometimes you swatch them on your arm and I feel like the color isn't always the same as when I put it on my eyelid. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced that as well, but sometimes I think it's prettier on the eyelid or it's more muted, um, which sometimes I like, especially when I'm looking at my transition shade. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go into the shade Cherished. It's like a very matte, light pink color. And I'm going to go ahead and apply that just all over the lid because I want a little bit of color to go underneath the other shimmery lid shade um, that I'm planning to use. I just want to give a little bit more of a pinky foundation here. I'm going to take my Sigma E25 and I'm going to dip into the shade Precious and I'm going to go ahead and apply that to my crease and well, it will be my outer V. The one thing I will say about this palette that I'm not so sure about is that I feel like there's only one really dark, no, well there's two really dark mattes and I'm not sure if for this look today if I want to dip into that darker shade because it looks like almost black. It's, it's really dark. So I'm not sure I want to go that dark today. Next, I'm going to take my BK Beauty, what is this? The 207 brush. This is my favorite one for any kind of detail work. I'm still dipping into that precious shade and I'm going to go ahead and connect my outer V. I will say that I am getting very little fallout on this palette. You know, the Huda Beauty shadows are kind of funny because I've found that those little, like, what is it, like the little nine pan ones, other than the first Obsessions palettes, I feel like those were not as pigmented. I had picked up um, the Khaki Haze. I wanna say that must've been almost two years ago now. Um, and that palette I was not as impressed with, but I do own the New Nude palette, which is another gorgeous springtime palette. I like the uh, formula in these bigger palettes. How many pans are in this? I wanna say it's like an 18 pan palette as opposed to those little nine pans. I feel like, um, I don't know if something has changed in the formula between the two, but um, these ones seem to perform very well for me. All right, the next shade that I'm going to go into is Self Love. And honestly, I'm just going to use my finger for this because I find that some of these um, shimmer glitter shadows with Huda's formula, I think they just work best with the fingertips. And I did apply that glitter glue earlier, remember? So I'm hoping I won't have any issues. Ooh, that's pretty. Look at that. Ooh. We just celebrated Easter and I'm over here still feeling like an Easter egg. Ooh, that's pretty. I like that. I'm going to take a Morphe M165. This is like a little angled eyeliner brush. And I'm going to dip back into that shade Radiate. That is the shade that I used on my transition. And I'm going to go ahead and just line underneath my eyes here just to give a little bit of definition, but honestly, this is such a soft look today that I don't really want a ton of definition underneath my eyes. 
I didn't pick up a new eyeliner, but I did apply Urban Decay, their 24 seven pencil in the shade Rockstar onto my top lid. And I also didn't pick up any new concealers, um, but I did pick up a new concealer brush, which is a very hyped up brush. It is from one of probably honestly my favorite brush brand or yeah, I mean they make other cosmetics too, but their brushes are phenomenal. And the brush that I picked up is the BK Beauty. It is the Angie Hot and Flashy. Uh, what number is this? I want to say it is called the A506 brush. So this is an amazing concealer brush. It is so smooth. And I think that that's one of the things that just sets um, BK Beauty brushes in a whole separate class by itself. The softness and the ease of blendability is just superb in my opinion. If you are new to makeup or if you have a limited budget about like you're trying to allocate where to spend your money when it comes to cosmetics, allocate more money towards your skincare and the tools that you are applying your makeup with over the makeup itself because there's a lot of great products like at the drugstore there's a lot of products that are mid-range you don't always have to buy super high-end things but your tools and your skincare that's where the difference is really made in my opinion so you see just how that um, concealer which is a very thick emollient concealer it's the it cosmetics bye bye under eye how quickly that blended out I mentioned in my March haul that I had picked up this little elf no bud shadow stick this is in the shade I want to say it's perfect pearl and it's just like a perfect inner corner highlight and so that is what I'm going to use it for I wouldn't say that it's no budge. I mean, it's probably just because of the area of my eye that I have applied this, but it works really well um, as long as I don't touch the inner corner of my eye during the day, which is a little bit hard to do this time of year with all of the allergies going around, my eyes get itchy. I picked up a new viral mascara. This is the MAC Max Stack. Now, I have never used MAC mascaras before. This is my first one. Um, and because I'm unfamiliar with their formula, I decided to go the safer route and pick up a mini size of it. And so here is the wand on it. It is one of those like rubberized bristle type of wands. So if you find those too pokey or whatnot, you're not going to like this. I do normally wear an, um, what would it be? An eyelash primer, but I'm not going to today just because I simply want to demonstrate what this mascara does on its own without any help. All right, so this is what my lashes look like after one coat of mascara. I will probably go in and put on another coat. Like I said earlier, make sure that you stay tuned until the end because I will give you my thoughts on a lot of these products, including this mascara. Since I was placing an order with MAC, they threw in this MAC strobe cream. So I thought that I would try this out for my highlight today. I'm honestly not somebody that really gets, whoa, that was a lot that came out. I'm honestly not somebody that really gets sucked in a lot by highlighters. Um, I was never really on board with that trend, but I know that a lot of people are. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this here. Oh, I hope this doesn't lift up my foundation. Um, I have not tried this yet. When I told you earlier that most of this stuff is not first impressions. I have been using most of this stuff for a while, um, but okay, that's nice. It gives me kind of just a little bit of a dewy finish there. I am not somebody that wants to shine from the heavens, especially on a Thursday afternoon, but um, if you want to, this may not be the product for you, or I could see this maybe being as like a base, and then you could go in with a powder highlight that you would want to um, really amp it up, but for me, this will be fine today. The product I was most excited to snag during the Sephora sale is this one. It is the Gucci bronzer. Now I know, I know everybody talks about this and, and it's expensive. And even it was funny, my 13 year old daughter saw that in there. She's like, mom, you got a Gucci bronzer. Like she was like, Ooh, fancy. I really tried not to buy into the hype, but this is a gorgeous bronzer. Now I will say that there is a tiny bit of fragrance to it, which honestly made me a little bit nervous when I picked it up. 
Mine is in the shade, what shade do I have, two? Yes, I have the shade two, which is actually a little bit deceptive because it, it shade two is actually darker than shade three. Um, this might be slightly too dark for me right now because I don't have my self tanner on. Um, but I do love that this is more of a red undertone. Um, I'm not sure how it's coming across on camera, but it's not, not orangey at all in person. Um, camera lighting can always make things appear a little bit skewed. Ooh, but this is nice. And so far the fragrance has not bothered my skin, which again, like I said, is something that concerned me at first because my skin typically does not like fragrance. The Sephora sale was also the perfect time for me to pick up another product that I had been eyeballing for a while. And it is this Patrick Ta, um, what are these called? The like blush duos. This is in the shade She's a Doll, which I believe was originally released with, um, there was like a three color palette around Christmas time. So Patrick recommends that you go in with the powder first. Oh, well, that's pretty and then apply the cream. I mean, everybody's seen these already, so I don't really need to demonstrate, but I do like that there's a little like plastic flap for the cream, so that way you're not getting that dirty. This is also another product that is a first impression for me because I have honestly picked up so many blushes lately that um, I just haven't gotten around to using this one yet. So the color is a very specific type of pink. I feel like you have to be wearing a certain type of eyeshadow look to wear with this. Well, that's pretty. I like that. What do y'all think? Very pretty. And always remember the tip, if you have not heard this before, that if you apply too much blush, you can always go in with a finishing powder over it and it will just like mute it down a little bit. So I will probably do that. I'm applying a lot so that way you can see it on camera. But honestly, for my everyday life here, I will probably go and apply a finishing powder over it just to tone it down. I didn't pick up any new lip colors. So this is the final look. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. I wanted to keep the eye look a little bit more toned down because I knew that that blush color was likely going to be pretty vibrant. Um, and I didn't want bold eyes, bold lips, bold, cheeks. A simple tip for you to take from this video is that choose one thing to be bold about on your face and then make sure that the rest of it is just a little bit more toned down. All right, so let me give you some final thoughts here on the products that were new to me. The NARS Soft Matte Foundation, yes, love it. I actually did include that in my Sephora recommendations video. That's how much I like it. Um, it lasts all day for me. It does not settle into fine lines or wrinkles. I do believe that there is a learning curve with it. You want to make sure that you don't use too much because you saw how full coverage it is just right off the bat. And make sure you go in with a dampened beauty blender to pick up any excess. I think that that really helps out. The Kosas Cloud Set Powder, gives me a very nice airbrushed effect. I actually just went and looked in the mirror in my bathroom where I have like really bright natural daylight and my skin at this moment looks airbrushed. It looks beautiful. The M Cosmetics Contour Stick, yes, um, Emily Noel recommended that and very few things that she has recommended have ever done me wrong. Um, that just blended out so beautifully and I love that it's not orange. So if you are looking for a contour stick, I would definitely check that out. The Rose Quartz Palette, it's very pretty. I will say that I think that if you prefer more soft, ethereal type of looks, then this is a good palette. This will be really good for this time of year, the springtime when I am typically looking for those pinks, um, kind of those soft, rosy colors. I don't see myself using that palette in the fall. However, I will say that there are some deeper, um, like deeper purples, almost like an indigo type of color that I can use on my lids. There's a couple of shimmer shades in there, so I am going to continue to play with that one. I am glad that I have that palette in my collection, um, but I don't think it's like your versatile. It's not as versatile as like a neutrals palette that you could just do anything with. But I do like the look that I came up with today. It's very light and pretty and perfect for the springtime. I already mentioned that the Gucci bronzer is a winner for me. That is also a bronzer that does not contain talc. So if you are like me and are looking for talc-free ingredients, 
that is a bronzer that you might want to look at. Uh, the MAC Strobe Cream, I mean, I wouldn't go out and purchase that, but I got it for free, so eh, I'll go ahead and use it up. Um, I do think that if you have drier skin and if you like a more luminous finish, I have seen that people mix that in with their foundation and it presents a very nice dewy finish. So if that is something that you are looking for, then maybe you might like that. It does feel slightly tacky initially when I put it on, but it feels like it's dried down just fine. So I didn't experience any residual tackiness. The Patrick Ta blush, yes, that went on very easily, very smoothly. Now, like I said today, this is my first time using it, so I can't speak for the longevity of it. Make sure you're following me on Instagram because a lot of the time, if I am trying a new product, I will talk about it on stories and then I do my very best to try to keep you updated throughout the day or the next day about how it wore. So make sure that you're following me over there because that's more like real time updates. The last thing I wanted to talk about is this MAC Stack Mascara. So yes, it's a very hyped up product. I will give you the pros on it because this is now the fourth time that I've worn it. Um, here's the pros on it. It does not smudge on my brow bone. Now, because my eyes are deeply set, if a mascara is going to smudge, it always will do it right here on my brow bone. I will see those little dots. I don't wear mascara on my lower lashes, so I can't speak to how it works on the lower lashes, but on my top lashes, it has not smudged. And our temperatures have been in the low to mid 90s this week, so the heat, it will usually bring out a mascara that is going to smudge on me. So that's a pro, no smudging. Also, if you have lashes that do not like to hold a curl, this mascara has done a very good job at holding my curl throughout the day. The negatives I will say is that I feel like I have to really build up this mascara. Um, it doesn't just give me that instant volume, say like It Cosmetic Superhero. Um, and quite frankly, when I wear this mascara, I feel like it doesn't really do anything different for me than say, uh, what's the mascara that I like at the drugstore? L'Oreal Unlimited. That That is my favorite drugstore mascara right now and I feel like nobody ever really talks about it. Um, but that mascara seems to do the exact same things for me as this one. This one retails for $28 for a full size tube. The L'Oreal one I want to say is around $11 or $12. So I mean it's less than half the price. The other thing that I will caution you about is that it is a little bit difficult to remove at night. Um, my Holy Grail cleanser has been for years the Clinique Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm. That stuff gets everything off, but even I have found that the last few days that I have been wearing this mascara, I really, really have to scrub at my eyes at night. So if that is something that would deter you, just be aware of that. Let me know in the comments down below if you picked up any of these products during the recent sales going on. I mean, it wasn't just Sephora. There were a lot of brands that were offering like friends and family sales. So let me know down below if there is a product that you have picked up and that you are totally loving. I would say of every product that I picked up, ooh, what's my favorite? What's my favorite? I would have to say it's a toss up. It's a toss up between the Gucci bronzer and the NARS soft matte. Ooh, which one should I pick? I'm just gonna be bougie today and say it's the Gucci bronzer because I do have other foundations that I like. If you enjoyed this video today, please remember to hit that thumbs up button because it really helps me out a lot. And if you are just meeting me for the first time, I'm Katie. Feel free to hit that subscribe button and join our family. I want to say thank you so much for spending your time here with me today. I know that our time is precious. If you have a little bit more time to spare, feel free to check out some of my other content that YouTube should be suggesting to you at the end of this video. Until my next one, I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day. Bye.